Behind these trees sits one of the rarest cars that I've seen. In fact, it's a car so rare, I'd never even heard of it before. So when I was asked if I'd be interested in detailing it, it was an easy yes. All right guys, well, I just pulled up at what I think is the house, so let's go take a look at this car. This is a 1986 Subaru XT Turbo, and it's been sitting here in this small town underneath these huge spruce trees for well over a decade. As you can see, it's covered in spruce needles and cones, and with the pile of siding, old tires, and lumber in front of it, we had some work to do to get the car out. Now the guy you see here in the green sweater, that's Dean, and this is his car and his yard. The other two guys are buying the car from him today. I'll have more on that later in the video, but once we get the path cleared in front of the car, we can get a tow rope hooked up and get this car out. Of course, things don't always go as planned and the car was going to hit the trailer, so Dean got a jack out and managed to shift the front end over a bit. Now this was a little janky if you ask me, but hey, it worked. Now, if you wondered why one of us didn't just hop in and steer the thing out, well, it's because a number of years back, the keys got locked inside the car, so Dean grabbed a coat hanger and started trying to hook the lock on the door, but after several unsuccessful attempts, he switched over to a long stick, which proved to be the answer. There we go. With the car opened up, I was finally able to get a better look at the interior, which is of course covered in cobwebs and likely had mice in it given how long it sat outside for. Of course, all four of us were super curious to know if this car would start or not, so after a few minutes poking around it, we tossed a battery in, threw a boost pack on it, and hoped for the best. Sadly, the car didn't cooperate, but with the battery in, we did test out the pop-up headlights, which still work perfectly, and that's super cool. Now, before we got the car loaded on the trailer, I was able to take a few minutes and chat with Dean a little more about the car and about his history with it. Did rally racing, off-road stuff, time attack racing, nice. mainly dirt stuff. Yeah, but yeah, and it ran good for you. Oh hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, cars, it loves the dirt. Yeah, <laughs> it sticks like glue because I've had WRXs and this thing kicked the crap out of them. Oh yeah. Well, after reminiscing about the good old days, it was time to get the car loaded on the trailer. And since we couldn't just drive it out, we had to tow it, which went fairly smoothly with the exception of the front driver's side wheel. A few short minutes later and the car was all strapped down and we also decided to throw a tarp over the front end to hopefully avoid all the spruce needles flying off and nailing cars behind it on the highway. And after a short 45 minute drive, the guys pulled into my yard and quickly got it unhooked. Now after foolishly thinking we were going to be able to just push it into the studio, I hopped on my quad and pulled it in, which involved a little bit of back and forth to get it in the right spot. The very next day I got to work on the car and the first thing I did was try to get this front tire reseated on the wheel, which I really didn't even know if it was possible. Of course, the moment there was weight on it, it was clear there's a hole in the tire somewhere, so I'll throw on a different wheel which Dean had sent with the car, and luckily that one held air. Now before I can do any work on this car today, I need to get all these spruce needles sucked up with the vacuum, as pressure washing them would be a terrible idea. They'd end up all over the studio and turn into a wet mess, so I'll use my shop back here as the canister on my central vac wouldn't even be big enough to hold them all.
I'm also going to go ahead right now and use the vacuum under the hood too as it's full as well. And again, knowing I'll be cleaning under here in a bit, I wanna make sure I've sucked up all the loose debris and cobwebs too. Believe it or not, but there was actually a weed growing out of the trunk jam here, which again just goes to show you that this car was sitting outside for a very long time. Here's everything I sucked up from outside of this car, which is totally crazy. All right, well with super embedded dirt like this on the paint, I'm starting with a pre-soak using my all-purpose cleaner diluted four to one, which oddly enough revealed what looks like moss that's growing on the car. But anyways, I'll let that sit for a couple minutes and then hit it with the pressure washer. And if you're wondering why I'm starting with the exterior first, well, besides the fact that I always do it this way, I don't know whether the seals on this car will hold very well, so doing the exterior first ensures that I'm not messing up my work on the inside if water did get in. So like I mentioned a little earlier in the video, the two guys that just bought the car are hoping to fix it up a bit and maybe even restore it. So my job today is really to get the car as clean as I can so they can get a good sense of what they're working with. And while they do plan to fix it up, they did want me to mention that if the right offer came along, they would consider selling it. Maybe there's someone out there who could really use this as a parts car since these vehicles are pretty rare. So they'd be okay with making a few quick bucks that way. Let me know if any of you out there would be interested in buying this car and I'll get you in touch with them.
Now with the hood being as bad as it is, I decided to go the aggressive route and use degreaser on it instead. So I'll let that sit for a couple minutes to really penetrate all the dirt and we'll then get to work blasting away all the grime, which is insanely satisfying. Even though the hood is looking pretty good, I'm going to repeat the process here as I can still see a little bit that didn't come off the first time. So because the car sat underneath those trees for so long, the crevices around all the doors and windows were completely full of spruce needles and other debris, so it's critical to get those areas sprayed out really well. Okay, here's the extra tire that was hanging out in the trunk. So I'm going ahead and cleaning this as well, since I plan to replace it for the donut later, and it of course has to be cleaned before it goes on the car. Next step here is to chemically decontaminate the paint using some iron remover. So I'll get that sprayed on all over the car and shockingly there's basically no iron contamination but it is turning purple in the rusted out spots as you'd expect. Time to get to work on the engine bay now that's housing a 1.8 liter turbocharged engine that produced 112 horsepower and 143 pound-feet of torque, so not a ton by today's standards, but what really set this car apart was its other features, including air springs and electronic height control, among others that I'll get into later on. All 
All right, well, that's pretty much gonna do it for the exterior, at least for now. There are a few more things that I'll do a little bit later on, but I gotta say, it is looking really, really good so far and definitely a lot better than I expected it to. So I'm pretty excited to see just how good I can get this car looking by the end of the day. But first things first, there's an entire interior there to tackle. So let's get to work. So when going through this car, I was pleasantly surprised to find the original floor mats along with some original documentation that came with the car. But when I moved to the trunk, I was less happy. I found evidence that mice had taken up residence in this car at one point, so I'm hoping there aren't any nasty surprises in store for me later. Now, while I work on the carpet here, go ahead and let me know how many kilometers you think are on this car. I'll show you guys the odometer a little bit later in the video, but for now, leave your guess down below and you can see if you were right. It's not as many as you might think. Now as I suck up more of the cobwebs, you guys can see this super unique and kind of quirky interior this car has. The steering wheel is asymmetrical and a lot of the buttons are on two control pods that stick out at 9 and 3, which is something I've never seen before and one of the reasons I think it would be super cool to be able to drive this car. Now thankfully the driver's seat cleaned up real nice, but this passenger seat isn't going to be so easy. It's pretty clear something was spilled in here, and when that happens, it's a lot more difficult to get the stain completely removed, 
What happens is that because it's soaked into the foam of the seat, as I make passes with the extractor, it looks clean for a minute, but then the stain wicks its way from down in the foam back to the surface. So having seen this happen a few times before, I know that I'll likely have to hit it with steam as well once it's a little bit drier. So another really cool thing about the Subaru XT is that when it was sold back in the 80s, it was the most aerodynamic production car sold in North America with a drag coefficient of only 0.29, which was only bettered by two other vehicles in the entire world. And in terms of a 0-60 to 60 time, it clocked in right around 10 seconds, which wasn't great compared to its competitors like the Toyota Supra and Honda Prelude, but if the race was taken off-road, then that's where this car would really excel. Well, since the car doesn't run and I can't move it out to do my normal bucket pour, here's the equally gross dump of truly putrid water sucked out of the car today. Now another interesting thing about this car is that it was manufactured by Fuji Heavy Industries, which I learned was a major supplier of military, aerospace and railroad equipment in Japan in the 80s, and even supplied airplanes to the Japanese government during World War II. Okay, now to complete the decontamination of the paint, I'll use some clay bar, and as you can imagine, after sitting outside for more than a decade, the paint was incredibly dirty.
Now, despite a good chunk of the paint having rust on it, I am going to cut and polish the sections that are in good shape, but which are few and far between. And while I do, I wanted to remind you guys that the next Yard Geek video is coming next Saturday, October 28th. It's more of a vlog style video this time, and I'll be doing some work to keep animals out of my yard, and I even catch one too, so don't miss it. All right, well, just before I get the tires dressed, I'm going to go ahead and throw that spare wheel on here in place of this donut as this tire won't hold air either due to a large cut in the sidewall. So I'm hoping that after I can get this wheel swapped, it'll hold air. And interestingly enough, these aren't the original wheels that would have come with the car. Not sure what happened to the originals, but these look pretty cool on here too. All right guys, well I finished up with the car late last night. I think it was about nine o'clock or so. So it's a new day and I just got a text from the guys this morning saying they're on their way over. So let's see what they think of the car. Hey, come on in, take a look at the car. Oh wow. Looks a little different, hey? Holy, yeah. <laughs> Looks good. Yeah. Better than we thought. Yeah, it turned out really good. That's awesome. Surprisingly, I didn't find any mice inside. No. I, re I really thought I was going to, but <laughs> did not. It's a little disappointed. <laughs> oh, wow. A little better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we can get it running. Yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. It's, it's a pretty cool car, right? It's, it's really like, it's unique, right? Like, yeah. I, I don't know what else at the time was made that's kind of like that, but. You got most of that stuff off though, hey? Yeah, I mean, remarkably, like, it's in rough shape though, right? I mean. Yeah. But it was, yeah, it was embedded really bad. I guess you guys will have your work cut out for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, you guys feel like doing some pushing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is gonna do it for my work on the car, but I hope that's not the end. I really hope the guys are able to get this car running and back on the road soon, because it's kind of a cool little car, and I personally would love to know how it drives and to see how that four-wheel drive handles out in the snow. 
But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this one, make sure you smash the thumbs up button and please let me know down in the comments if you want me to do another vehicle like this, you know, something that's been sitting outside or maybe in a barn for a decade or two, I'm more than happy to try to find a vehicle like that for you guys. But until then, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one.